Welcome back, Kyle fans, to the first edition of the Shoe Sports Report for the 2018-2019 season. I'm Gino Ganell, and we will get you all caught up with a few sports that have already kicked off their season here at Sacred Heart University. The first team to put points on the board for Shoe was the women's soccer team, who have had a slow start to their season. Their season opener was also their home opener, as the Pioneers hosted Iona at Park Ave Field. Despite being down three, Sacred Heart looked for a comeback as they would score twice late in the second half. Unfortunately, time was not on their side as they fell to Iona 3-2. After two losses on the road against Temple and St. John's, the women's soccer team looks to bounce back this Friday as they travel to Brown for a 7 p.m. kickoff. We'll keep it on the pitch as the men's soccer team kicked off their season with a road game at NJIT. The lone goal to be scored would be early in the second half by NJIT. Shu then found some momentum as they hosted UMass for their home opener. This time, the Pios would get on the board first with a screamer from sophomore Alejandro Arribas. This game resulted in a tie after being pushed into double overtime off of a late goal in the 86th minute. The men's team looks to improve on their 0-1-1 record as they host the Manhattan Jaspers at Park Ave Field Monday the 3rd with a 12 p.m. kickoff. After the break, we have the voice of the Pioneers, Randy Brochu, with football head coach Mark Nofri for a shoe football season preview. Welcome back to the Shoe Sports Report. I'm joined by Mark Nofri in his sixth season as the head coach, 26th season overall with Sacred Heart Football. And coach, thank you for coming down and giving us some time and a little insight into the season. Thank you. Love to be back and uh, glad we're back on again. Always fun when the, a new season begins. Obviously last year, uh, a number of games didn't turn out the way you wanted, but again, that compete factor is always there with Sacred Heart Football. You were in so many tight ones. And this year, uh, a, a little bit of experience under the belt of some younger players. What are you seeing in camp this year? Well, you know, during camp, you always want to get through it healthy and, uh, and get your team prepared. And there's always the, the unknown, not knowing, you know, how you're going to fare against the other opponent. Because uh, there's days where I thought we were going to be pretty good uh, during camp. And, uh, you know, then you have your dog days of summer where, you know, Kids weren't uh, playing like they were supposed to, and it was a little tough practice to get through. But overall, they worked really hard. Um, I love the team chemistry that we have. I like the younger kids that we have in the program and the talent that um, we brought in this past two recruiting classes. And then uh, I'm happy to see some of these kids stick around, like some of the seniors and fifth-year kids, uh, see them grow into leadership roles and what they bring to the table as well. The good news is your starting quarterback is returning, as is your top receiver in Kevin Duke and Andrew O'Neill. And of course, Jordan Meacham is a real weapon in a number of different uh, positions. So you've got some symmetry coming back and also some guys with the ability to step up and, and fill some holes. Who else should we expect to see things from this um, year? Offensively this year, I think you're going to see a bigger role for Eli Terry, one of our other running backs. Um, Del Driscoll and Ed Cudahy in the tight end position. And, uh, you know, we got some young kids and some new kids to the program that will be helping out with the receiver. Uh, we're real happy about the uh, development of Josh Sokol, uh, a center that's coming back uh, for his redshirt sophomore season. Um, and then we return Nakeem Lewis and Andrew Starr on the offensive line. So there's some guys that have come along um, that we're excited about. And defensively, you know, Kevin Sears is back. He was voted captain this past year. Uh, he's playing the outside linebacker for us. We have Bob Steffi coming back um, for actually his fifth year as well, who was injured last year on the defensive line. Chris Agamen uh, was in the program for two years, played a lot last year and started. Uh, expect great things from him. Um, Josh Turner was a freshman last year that played a lot. Um, he'll be a sophomore for the back end. Sean Ram Sharon is back at corner from uh, a year of injury. Uh, we got Denzel Williams, Brandon Slade, and then at the inside linebacker position, Mike Weiland and Pat Lukert have done a great job transitioning from their freshman year to their junior years in terms of buying into the program, getting bigger, getting stronger, and playing hard, and Coach Cook's done a good job bringing those guys along. So I'm happy about their attitude, uh, their work ethic, and, and what they're trying to bring to the table for us. And defensively, you listed a number of guys that uh, were, I know you're very high on their talent. 
and now they have that experience. Maybe some coming back from injury. You referenced John Ram, Sharon. How is that experience going to play out for them? Well, whenever you got kids that have been on the field for you for more than you know a season, it, it always helps going down the road. You know, like we talked about Kevin Duke at quarterback. You know, he was in the program for three years and really didn't take any snaps. And last year, senior year, was his first time playing in all 11 games and getting the experience. So I'm expecting bigger and better things for the kids that have played significant amount of time to where they are now. Um, having that experience under their belt is tremendous. Uh, you know, some kids you have to throw into the fire and see they re how they react, and hopefully they can do what's asked of them and, and compete, and it pretty much becomes a maturity thing. Um, again, some of the guys that we're expecting to step up now have been in the program a year or two, and some even three, and it'll be their first time on the field for us. What do we expect against Lafayette? The Leopards are the first opponent on the docket September 1st, Saturday night. Well, they're, they're going to be a good football team. They're, they're big, they're physical, they're always you know, competitive. Uh, their quarterback is returning. He's a sophomore. He did a great job last year for him. I know they finished the season on a, a good note. They won four out of their last six games. Uh, the receiver is back, who uh, is very good, I think. Defensively, uh, defensive lineman is back. Um, the transfer from Syracuse was out, outstanding. They got a linebacker that's a senior and a couple kids in the back end that are back. So, again, they've always been a tremendous football team. They're big. They're physical. They play in a great league, in the Patriot League. They've had football for over 134 years, uh, and I'm sure John's going to have those guys ready to go. It's his second year in the program, so a little bit more comfortable with him. So I'm expecting a, a very good football team to come in here, and we have to play our best. Now off the field, it's Heroes Day again this year. On opening night, you see the great – helmets you'll be wearing on opening night to kind of honor first responders who Sacred Heart's mm -hmm. going to welcome in. Sacred Heart football is going to welcome in for a special night. What does that mean to you and the guys to be able to do that? Well, every game that we try and uh, have some type of theme and, and every year, you know, we sometimes we play on 9-11, sometimes we don't um, and we're away next week and so we're trying to do something this week for it. But it means something, you know, to go out there and recognize somebody and, and people that work. You know, and like you said, the first responders and their heroes and, and, uh, and the servicemen and what they do for our country um, and for our area. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a great event. Um, I take great pride in it. Uh, we try to invite, you know, police, Fairfield Police and Fairfield Fire Department to come down and be honorary captains as well on that day. But each game this year, you'll see we're uh, representing something. Um, and I think it's important. It's more than just a football game to represent and acknowledge people uh, throughout the course of the year. Thank you very much, Coach. Very much looking forward to Saturday night under the lights, 6 o'clock, opening night to start the 2018 season. Good luck. Thank you. I appreciate having me. Mark Nofri, the head coach. Make sure to get your tickets today for Sacred Hearts home opener against Lafayette this Saturday night at Campus Field for a 6 p.m. kickoff. And if you can't make the game or are one of our many pioneer fans across the country, be sure to check out the game on NECfrontrow.com. After the break, more shoe sports coming your way. Welcome back to the Shoe Sports Report. We'll continue this show with some women's volleyball as they started off their season on the road, taking part of the Boston College Invitational. The Pios split their two games in the Invitational, taking game one against Providence with a clean sweep. Redshirt junior Liesel Nellis led all hitters with 10 kills throughout the match. Shoe closed out every set by at least six points. The Pios then went up against a tough Boston College team. Set one was a clear victory for Shoe as they took the first set 25-21. Unfortunately, Boston College found their footing and took the next three sets, taking the match 3-1. Women's volleyball is back in action this evening as they head right down the road to our crosstown rival Fairfield University with a 7 p.m. start time. We'll end today's show with Sacred Heart Field Hockey as the team started their schedule off with a five-game road trip. Sacred Heart kicked off this road trip over the weekend as they took on Lock Haven. Despite Lock Haven putting 12 shots on goal, Sophomore goalkeeper Haley Power only allowed two to get past her. Sacred Heart put on an offensive show as three different pioneers scored against Lockhaven, leaving Sacred Heart with the victory. Shu then traveled to Lehigh for their second of five games on the road. Once again, Power found herself defending 12 shots on goal, this time only allowing one. 
Sacred Heart put two on the board to take back-to-back -back wins, winning against Lehigh 2-1. This marks the first time the field hockey team has opened their season with two consecutive wins since the 2013-2014 season. Field hockey continues their road trip Friday as they face off against Georgetown with a 1 p.m. start time. That'll wrap it up for our first show here at the Shoe Sports Report. Be sure to tune in at our normal time on Thursdays for all shoe sports action, highlights, and more. From all of us here, I'm Gino Ganello. Have a great week.